Jonesy with Jetters Northwest and the subject of today's Get Jetting video is choosing a water tank size. Whether you're purchasing a trailer jetter or especially probably if you're purchasing like a, a jetter to go inside of a van, which is definitely the trend nowadays, how big of a water tank do you need is a question we get a lot. So we're going to talk about that today. Okay, so I've drawn out a system for you here. I'm no artist, but this would be the water tank that's supplying water to our jetter. And the blue here is the water going through obviously a pipe or a hose to our hydro jetter. And we've got our water pump here. It goes through some control valves into the hose reel, going through all that hose, through the hose ultimately to the nozzle to clean the pipe. Okay, so now we've established what we got going here. We're going to run some scenarios of how big that water tank is, how much the jetter is consuming of that water, and then we'll talk about what we call a drawdown factor. Okay, for this example, let's say that we have a 100 gallon tank, and then that our hydro jetter does 10 gallons per minute at full output. Now, with any jetter, full output means full throttle. If you're not running full throttle, you're not getting full gallons per minute. Okay, so we're going to work on that assumption. Let's say we're doing a root cutting job or something, a lot of flushing. We want to go wide open. We bought a 10 gallon a minute jetter. We want to use that 10 gallons a minute. So if we ran continuously, and if we just started with the full tank, we're not connected to any water supply, we'd have 100 gallons of water divided by our 10 gallons per minute equals we could run 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, we're going to be out of water. We're going to have to stop and refill. So in the next scene, we're going to add a water supply to this and then talk about drawdown. Let's unpack this word drawdown. Okay, in a scenario like we just did where we had no water coming in, we just started with a full tank. Our 100 gallons drew down 10 gallons every minute because that's what our jetter was drinking. Well, what if we add to the scenario some incoming water? We're going to hook up to a hose bib or something that's going to give us a continuous feed of water. Now, if we could have that water supply be 10 gallons a minute, well, then it would keep up with our jetter that's drinking 10 gallons a minute. We got 10 gallons coming in from rain coming. We got 10 gallons going out. We're good. We could run until we run out of fuel. But how many hose bibs actually give you 10 gallons a minute? Now here on the west coast, you know, sometimes we run into that. We do have water supplies, I hear about that, with the right connections. They do give 10 plus gallons a minute, but that's more uncommon than it is common, right? So for a scenario here, let's just say that we had kind of a weak hose bib and it's giving us five gallons per minute. Five gallons a minute is coming in from the hose bib, continually feeding the tank. <clears throat> Our jetter is running full bore still, 10 gallons a minute coming out. So we're going to have a five gallon per minute drawdown. Let me explain that. Okay, again, we have a 10 gallon per minute jetter. That's what it's consuming. We have five gallons a minute coming in to subsidize that, if you will. So we can subtract that five gallons per minute in equals five gallons per minute is our new drawdown. Instead of drawing down 10 gallons a minute, we're only drawing this 100 gallons down five gallons every minute. So how does that change our run time? Well, start with the 100 gallons again of a full tank and divide that by our five gallon per minute drawdown. Now, Dividing again, we can run 20 minutes before we run out of water. So you could say five gallons a minute is pretty weak water supply, but look what it did. It cut down our drawdown in half. Now that doubled our run time. Instead of running out of water in 10 minutes, we're going to be able to run for a full 20 minutes. Okay, next, let's talk about changing the water tank size. Say the scenario I just did was not good enough for you. Say, hey, what if I went with a 150 gallon tank? 
Well, again, just take the 150 gallons and divide it by the five gallon drawdown. And now you can run 30 minutes before you run out of water. So you can see that by increasing our water capacity 50%, we increased our run time by 50%. Okay, so, so far with the work we've done, we started out with a 10 minute run time, 10 gallons a minute from a 100 gallon tank. And then we added some water. We extended that run time from 10 minutes to 20 minutes because we had five gallons a minute coming in. And then we increased the tank size, 150 gallons, got the run time, continuous run time up to 30 minutes. So what can we do now? Let's say we like the, the 150 gallon tank size what can we do to improve that continuous runtime even more? Well, let's work on improving this incoming water. At five gallons a minute, we can do better than that, right? So let's just say that there was a five eighths inch cheap hardware store garden hose on this, 100 feet long or something. And this is something I see guys trip over a lot. Don't get the cheapest garden hose you can find out there. At least get yourself a three quarter inch hose and if you can avoid stretching it out 200 feet 300 feet i mean maybe sometimes you have to do that for the job but if you can keep that hose down to 50 that's great if you got to go 100 fine but let's just say in this scenario we go to a three quarter inch by 100 foot hose well, i can tell you approximately depending on the water system pressure that's going to get you up to about seven gallons a minute coming in now that's only two more gallons a minute, but let me show you what that does to your continuous runtime. Okay, so starting again, we have a 10 gallon per minute jetter. That's what it's drinking, consuming. We're subsidized, if you will, with seven gallons a minute incoming. So that equals three gallons per minute is our new drawdown. Okay, well we went from 10 gallon drawdown to five gallon drawdown. Now we're all the way down to three gallons of drawdown. So we got 150 gallons on a full tank. Let's see how that changes our runtime. Tank is full. We're only drawing down three gallons a minute. So we divide the 150 by the three, which equals 50 minutes of continuous runtime. Just by changing our garden hose in this example. So again, I really encourage you to don't shortchange your incoming water. You know, it's very popular now. You guys get eight gallon a minute, 10 gallon a minute, you know, 12 gallon a minute jetters, going in vans, on trailers, whatever it might be. And don't have your whole operation held up by just having a lame source, a lame hose connecting you to your, you know, your source of water. Really encourage you to take a look at that in your jetter operations. Okay, another thing to consider is why stop at just one hose or source of incoming water? Um, when you have the opportunity, I see you guys do this where they might have a three quarter inch hose coming from hose bib A and another three quarter inch hose coming from hose bib B and then together bring them into the tank. And often when you do that, now you can get the 10 plus gallons you might be looking for to run continuous without stopping. Something to consider as you're kind of setting up. All right, let's chew on this tank size thing for just a, a moment again. Okay, this went all the way up to 150 gallon sizing, but a lot of you might want to run off like a 50 gallon tank, um, you know, 80 gallon tank. Um, a lot of jetters, like our Brute jetters, have a built-in buffer tank here that maybe holds 10, 12 gallons. Um, if you're really wanting to run off a smaller tank, one thing to consider is the stop-start effect of jetting, okay? If we're in here, if our mode of business is doing like reline prep or, or dealing with storm lines, dealing with heavy rip masses, we're running, 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 you're probably gonna find yourself needing a larger tank. But if you're doing a lot of service jetting, you know how it is. In service jetting, you're not always running 50 minutes or 20 minutes even. A lot of times you're blasting away for a short time, you pause, 
You get your camera in there, take a look. Um, your customer interrupts you, asks you a question, looking over your shoulder, you check on something else. And all that time that you've paused, you're jetting along, you close your control valve, boom, boom, water flow stops. What happens? Okay, well the jitter's still pumping, it's pumping it back to the tank. And all that time while you're paused and using your camera or whatever, that incoming water is still coming in. Let's say if it's even just five gallons a minute, if you've paused for 10 minutes, five times 10 is 50 gallons came back in that tank, okay? If you have a little 12 gallon buffer tank, in two minutes that thing's full again, right? So something to consider again is if, if you're doing service jetting, you just do a lot of stop start and you're jetting, generally speaking, you can get away with the smaller water tank. Okay, let's sum this up. Now there's lots of water tank sizes available. And of course, there's lots of jetter sizes available. And to me, the size of the jetter really is its gallons per minute, because that's the size of its cleaning power, along with the velocity, the PSI that it can do. You know, a lot of you guys run 15, 18, 20 gallon a minute jetters, especially in trailers. And um, having some good incoming water is important to keep up with that water drawdown from a large jetter. And, of course, you're probably using a, a 200 or 300 gallon tank or even larger. But we're talking a lot about these service vans and that's the trend right now. And everybody wants to save floor space in those service vans or on the deck of a truck or inside an enclosed trailer. And how much space the jetter takes up and how much space that water tank takes up are factors. And keeping that water tank size down can give you more space in that enclosure for all the other stuff you have. So, appreciate you watching. This is Jonesy with Jetters Northwest. Give us a like, subscribe, and get out there and get jetting.